There's a lot of information out there in mainstream psychology about trauma, but what's trauma from a spiritual perspective? The answer to this question will help you heal trauma effectively and at its root so you don't have to spend years in therapy or conventional treatments that many times don't work. In this video, you'll learn what trauma is from a spiritual perspective, how you can have trauma without even knowing it, the top spiritual issue with trauma that makes it hard to heal sometimes, and then I'm going to finish off with my top four-step practice to help you heal trauma effectively and at its root. Coming up. Hello, beautiful soul. That intro that you just saw is for my private retreat, The Heart Accelerator, which has its enrollment doors that are going to be closing in the next couple of days. The Heart Accelerator is a life-changing retreat where we go deep into healing, uh, group coaching, community building, and nightly sound healing ceremonies that are amazing. There is so much more going on with The Heart Accelerator. I'm only doing one retreat in 2022, and that's going to be from April 24th to May 1st. So if you're really wanting to come on retreat with me, I can't wait to welcome you in the beautiful Algarve region in the south of Portugal. The enrollment doors will close on November 4th. So if you're interested in coming on retreat with me, click on the link in the description box below so you can learn more about the Heart Accelerator and book your spot while it still lasts. On to part one of the video, what's trauma? So trauma is discussed and studied a lot in the field of psychology specifically especially. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a mainstream definition of trauma, but then I want us to go deeper and I'm also going to give you a spiritual definition of trauma and we'll work on that from there. Okay. So the mainstream definition of trauma is uh, a psychological and emotional response to an experience that is deeply distressing. Now, what you'll notice about this definition in mainstream psychology is that this definition of trauma is very mind dominant. Okay. So it's very mind dominant and it leaves out a really important uh, aspect of trauma. And that's where we're going to get into spiritually. It leaves out both the body and also the energy aspects of trauma that are so important. If you don't understand these energy aspects, these spiritual aspects to trauma, and you're trying to just heal trauma from a mind level, you're never going to get to the root of it and you won't be able to heal fully. And this is why a lot of times people with trauma spend years and years in conventional therapy and they never seem to be able to heal. The only thing that they seem to be able to do is cope. And I really don't like the word cope <laughs> because what that means is that you are going to have something permanently and you just have to get used to dealing with it. Basically, that's what coping means. And for me, trauma can be healed and it can be healed at the root cause, but you have have to understand the spiritual aspects behind trauma. All right. So now let me give you the spiritual definition of trauma, and then we're going to break it down a little bit. All right. So spiritually trauma is a mind, body, and energy response to an experience that is deeply distressing. Now this definition may look on the surface, like it's very similar to the mainstream definition, but there are some, some differences, right? So now we're talking about disturbances at the mind level, the body level, and the energy level. These three levels are so important to address in order for trauma to be fully healed. Okay. So let's go into the, let's go into the different parts. All right. So at the mind level, trauma can create mental disturbances and it can create a lot of fears. It can create a lot of mental looping. It can create a lot of uh, memories that get stuck that you're unable to process. So there's a lot going on on the mental level. Well, that's absolutely true. Trauma can cause significant disturbances on the mental level. And that's usually what's addressed in standard therapy. But now let's go to the other two levels. All right. One of them is the body level. This isn't talked about as much, but your body, it will store trauma in its cells. Your body will actually store trauma. And so if the body is not addressed and worked with, it's very difficult to heal trauma uh, completely. 
So you can think of your body sort of as a record keeper of everything that's ever happened to you, including traumatic experiences. And if you don't address the body, it'll be really hard to heal. Okay. So that's another level. It's the mental level. Now we talked a little bit about the body level. And now let's talk about the third level, which is the energy level. Now, one little side note before we get into the energy level that I forgot to mention here on the body level, there's a really, really cool book that if you want to go into and research a little bit more what it means to have body, uh, to have trauma stored in your body, there's this beautiful book that is a must read for anyone who goes through trauma and wants to learn how to heal it at its root. The book is called Waking the Tiger by Peter Levine, and this is a really a must read. I'm going to leave links to that book in the description box below so you can purchase that and read through it and you'll get a better understanding of this deeper understanding of trauma and how to heal it especially its presence in the body but now let's get into the third level which is that energy level that i was talking about okay this one is for sure not talked about uh in mainstream so we're going to go deeper into this one the energy level what i mean by energy level is that you are made up of a lot more than just your body and your mind Okay. So you're made up of a lot more. So think of yourself as having a part of you that's quantum or subtle. It's made of subtle energy. It's not made of matter or of mass. You can't see it with your eyes, but it's a really, really important part of you. And it's a part of you that is, it comes, it, it really has a, a significant role when it comes to trauma. So when you think of the energy part of you, think of things like your aura, uh, your chakra, which are our energy points in your body. You can think of your meridians. There's a lot of different parts of you that are non-visible with the naked eye. And those parts of you, they need to be functioning properly in order for the other parts of you to be okay. If you don't have a properly functioning energy system, your body is going to get sick and it's going to die. Okay. So that's how important this energy level is. When you go through trauma, here's the ding ding. When you have trauma, your energy system is going to be disrupted in one way or another, meaning that chi or prana or energy, it won't be, uh, it won't be circulating well throughout your body when you have trauma, because the energy aspect, the energy level of trauma will create some sort of blockages in your energy system. And that will create disruptions in the flow of chi. And whenever there's disruptions in the flow of chi, your, the, the health of your physical vessel and the health of your mind, the health of your whole being can be compromised. All right. So this energy level is really important to remember when you have trauma, you're affected at the mental, the body and the energy aspect. And now that you know, these three, now you have a deeper understanding on how to possibly heal from trauma just beyond the mind level. So here's an important mantra that I want you to remember just as a reminder on how important this energy level is. Okay. So trauma affects the natural flow of subtle energy or chi in your body. Okay. Don't forget this. This is, this is one of the most important aspects of this video is for you to understand that if you have any kind of trauma, energy or chi is not going to be circulating properly in different aspects of your energy field. Okay. Now that you know that there's a disruption in chi, now you'll understand that you can go deeper in the healing because you're eventually going to have to address your energy system. Okay. You see how deep we're going in the, in the healing of trauma. So when you address these levels, now you start to understand that healing trauma is possible. You don't have to cope with trauma your whole life. You can actually heal it, but you just have to go deep enough to understand its root the deepest roots of trauma. On to part two of the video. Do you have trauma? So this is an interesting one because I've worked with thousands of people from all over the world. And I can't tell you the amount of times that people come to me and they don't even realize they have trauma. They don't even realize it. They don't know it. Okay. And let me tell you why this happens so frequently. So the main reason why this happens so frequently is because we're dealing with what's known as an empath or an HSP. Okay. So, uh, HSP highly sensitive person, empaths and HSPs are highly sensitive beings. And a lot of times what happens with empaths is they can be traumatized by events or circumstances that wouldn't traumatize non empaths. And what ends up happening is an empath or a sensitive will come to me and they will say, Oh, you know, I had a pretty normal childhood. Nothing really traumatizing happened, you know, like, 
you know, like horrible things like rape or incest or abuse or whatever. I've not, I've hadn't had any of that stuff. So I'm not traumatized. <laughs> you see what's happening here. The person is looking outside and they're seeing the things that are supposed to traumatize you. And these are big things. And they're not considering the fact that they are sensitives and as sensitives, they can be traumatized by events that may seem smaller to the outside world. Okay. So here's an example. If someone's really sensitive, let's say they're a sensitive child and their mother or their father screams at them a lot. And let's just say that's the normal thing. You know, mom or dad just loves to scream and they just scream. And that seems to be the normal thing in standard society. Maybe an adult screaming at you or shouting at a child may not be something that, that seems highly traumatizing when compared to like a rape or, or sexual abuse or something horrible like that, or a war zone. These are big things. And so when we look at these big things, we say, wow, that, you know, I can see where that there's trauma there, but sometimes, you know, an adult shouting with a child doesn't seem like there would be trauma there. So these are smaller events, but because the child is sensitive, that event can traumatize them too. And then what ends up happening is the child will grow up and they'll normalize that trauma. They won't even consider it trauma. So they'll be traumatized and they won't even know it. Okay. And this presents a problem because if I don't know I have trauma, I won't know that I need to heal anything. Okay. So this is a really important spiritual aspect that happens with empaths and with HSPs. So if you're a sensitive person, consider a certain parts of your life and whether you've been normalizing certain things, Maybe you've been traumatized by things that you didn't consider to be distressing um, events up until now, until watching this video. If you want to go deeper on empaths and HSPs and really learning a little bit more about, you know, how sensitive you are and whether you are an empath or an HSP, um, I shot two videos on this topic. I'm going to leave links to these two videos in the description box below. So you can watch after watching this one, you can go deeper into the, into the topic of empaths and HSPs. On to part three of the video, the top issue with trauma. So there's one spiritual issue that we really need to address. It needs to come up uh, into our conscious awareness um, because it's going to help with the healing process. Okay. So here's the top spiritual issue. The top spiritual issue with trauma is that trauma can cause energy fragmentation in you. Okay. It can cause energy fragmentation. Now let me explain what this means. When you're going through trauma, a lot of times, especially if you're an empath or, or an HSP, when you're going through trauma, your soul deploys a protection mechanism. It actually pulls out a little bit of its soul essence from your body. And when it does that, it's doing that as a protection mechanism to numb your system a little bit so you can at least survive the trauma. All right. This is a protection mechanism at the time. Your soul actually pr pulls part of its soul essence out of your body. When it does that, you feel more numb. Naturally, you're not as sensitive. The more soul energy you have in your body, the more sensitive you are. The less soul energy you have in your body, the less sensitive you are. And so initially your soul is doing this as a protection mechanism. The problem is years later, months or years later, or when you grow up, now you have a significant problem because now you are fragmented energetically. Your, your soul essence isn't all here and that can present a lot of problems. So again, if you're going to therapy and you're doing your counseling and you don't realize or address the energy fragmentation that's being caused by the trauma, it's very difficult to heal completely because the healing is only going to occur when your soul essence comes back to you. All right. So this, this energy fragmentation aspect is really important to remember, especially when it comes to the healing of trauma, which we'll get into in a little bit. So here's an important thing to remember. Uh, this is a good mantra so that you can remember this moving forward. And the mantra is less soul energy, less pain. Okay. More soul energy, more pain, right? Now this means that the more your soul energy is in your body, the more sensitive you are to the things that are happening on the outside, the less soul energy, the less sensitive you are because you're numb really. So again, this is a protection mechanism that at the moment that, that the trauma is occurring at the moment that the trauma is occurring, this could be life-saving for you. That numbness could be life-saving, but then later on it has to be addressed because otherwise you're going to live in a state of fragmentation forever. Okay. So this is super, super important to remember that when we're 
healing trauma, we must address the fragmentation in energy. That's such a crucial, crucial, important part. We must call our soul energy back to us in order for the healing to be complete. On to part four of the video, how to heal. Okay. So the majority of people, uh, when they start healing trauma, they actually come into the healing of trauma through the lens of psychotherapy. Okay. And psychotherapy is, is a great route to start. Nothing wrong with it. Therapy can be very, very beneficial and wonderful. So the majority of people enter the healing of trauma through the route of psychotherapy because it's the most acceptable form of healing still in standard Western society. But now that you're watching this video, you'll understand that if you are doing psychotherapy or if you've tried to heal through the psychotherapy route, you have to go a little bit deeper. So you have to add some complementary uh, tools to your regular psychotherapy in order for that, uh, for the healing to, to take place fully. Okay. So I'm going to share with you a really cool practice that I like using for starting to work with trauma and healing it in the different facets that trauma has on the mind level level, the body level, and on the energy level. So this is a four step process. And the first step is they're all important, but the first step is, you know, the first step start here. This is an important one. And that is intention. Okay. Intention, conscious intention, not only to heal trauma, but conscious intention to call back to you the soul energy that has fragmented when you were traumatized. Okay. So this is really important. I like to do, uh, this, this first step, I like to do it in the form of a sort of a ceremony. So I like to put drumming music on. I like to burn some sagers, Palo Santo. I like to use sacred smoke. Uh, I'll have music. Sometimes I'll be dancing and moving my body and I'll start to, to kind of bring in the energy of intention there. And as I'm doing this, I'll repeat mantras. I'll repeat intention mantras. I'm going to share one with you that, that I love for healing trauma. I'll share this one with you, but you can design your own mantras if you want to. Okay. So here's my healing mantra that you can use in your own intention ceremony. It's my intention to heal this trauma and welcome my soul parts back to me now. Okay. So notice, notice this mantra. I'm not just talking about healing trauma. I'm not just setting the intention to heal trauma. I'm setting the intention to heal trauma, but also ding, ding, to bring the soul parts back to me. Any soul part that is fragmented, I'm asking it to come back to me now. This is a really, really important part of the intention. So you can write this mantra down and use it, or you can design your own that has kind of the same components, which is intention to heal the trauma, but also intention to welcome the soul parts back. The more open and welcoming you are in your body and in your whole energy system, the faster that soul energy can come back to you and integrate into your system. That's what this intention is doing. This intention is setting the, the stage for the integration of your energy. I, I love this. The, this word is kind of, you know, coming into my head right now is integration. All right. That's what healing of trauma is all about integration so that you become a whole being again before the fragmentation started. All right. So, uh, so step number one, strong intention, repeat that mantra many, many times, the more you repeat the mantra and, and bonus points, you know, like <laughs> sometimes I, I like to give this as a pro tip, but here's a pro tip. Ding, ding, repeat the mantra out loud, use your throat chakra, repeat the mantra over and over again. The more that you repeat the mantra, the more you're going to be solidified your intention and creating a strong energy momentum towards that specific intention. Step number two of the process is to work with the body. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. So remember your body is super important. It's a record keeper for your trauma. Trauma will actually be housed in the body. So you have to address the body. You have to work with the body so that the trauma can be healed. Okay. So get into your body, work with your body. There are many ways in which you can work with your body but I'm going to share with you my top three favorite that I have for working with the body, uh, to kind of get that energy moving and to start processing, uh, any blockages, any blocked energy of trauma in your body. The first one that I love using is 
breath work. Oh, breath work. I love breath work so much. Okay. So breath work is amazing. And what breath work does is it oxygenates, it hyper oxygenates your body. As soon as you start to work with deep breathing, that's what we're really talking about with breath work is deep breathing. When you start to work with deep breathing techniques, you really start to get into the body. You awaken the body, you awaken chi moving in the body, and that will start the process of really accelerating the the healing of trauma. You can do any kind of breath work. It doesn't have to be a specific technique. Um, you can use a pranayama, the yogic breathing. You can use a Wim Hof breathing. Look that one up. Uh, you can use holotropic breathing. There's another one. There's a ton of different breathing techniques that you could use, but just look up on the internet, look up uh, deep breathing techniques, and you're going to find a technique and maybe start to experiment with different ones. You can even look on YouTube. There are, there are so many videos of guided breath work sessions that you just put your earphones on and you follow the person guiding you through a session. Okay. So breath work, a great, great starting place to get into your body and start to circulate chi and addressing and processing that energy of trauma. The second way to start working with your body is through dancing. I love to use dancing specifically with a lot of drumming. Okay. So I will very specifically put some, uh, some shamanic music, some drumming music on, and I'll start to dance. I'll start to really move my body. Here's a pro tip for dancing. Ding, ding pro tip for this one dancing in ways that your body's not used to moving. Okay. So move your body in ways that you wouldn't move it on a regular everyday basis, right? If you move your body in different ways, you get your body out of its regular routine and that'll start to break any blockages and open energy up in your body. Okay. So dancing is a great way. Adding some shamanic deep drum that really helps. It helps you connect with your body and start to do that work more deeply. The third way that I use that I love to work with the body with this one is with the use of vibration. Oh, I love this so much. And what I mean by vibration is literally just shaking your body. Okay. So I work with vibration a lot. Vibration really starts to break up energy blockages in your body. Okay. So you can do something as simple as just put a music track on and just stand there and, you know, start vibrating your body, start shaking, just make yourself feel like a rag doll and just shake, 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 shake. And you could shake your body for a whole uh, music track, right? So maybe a few minutes and you just keep shaking your body. Vibration is really, really cool. A really cool tool to break up energy blockages and start to get into the trauma and process the energy and release it from the body. Step number three of this practice is soothing mantras. Now, why do I bring soothing mantras in here in step three, right? The reason is that when I set the intention, when I do step one, and then I start working with my body in step two, an interesting thing may happen. Here's what may happen. Your body and your mind may go into what's known as holding patterns. Okay. A holding pattern is when the body and the mind, they start to sense that trauma's coming up and they will think they're reliving it. And so they'll hold, they'll, they'll go into a holding or protection or tightening, um, a kind of way. It usually starts at the mind. So the mind will usually start saying, oh, uh, I'm not feeling safe, not feeling safe. Trauma's coming up. And then when the mind starts to chitter chatter, the body will listen and will say, oh my God, danger, danger. And it'll lock. Okay. So that's what a holding pattern is. This is very frequent for that to happen in the mental level and at the body level, as you're starting to work with, with, uh, trauma. And this is why the soothing mantras are so important to come in. When you use soothing mantras, you're calming the mental and the body. You're calming these two levels down so that you can continue to go deeper into the trauma and you can continue to go deeper into the healing of it without the body or the mind blocking that healing. You can use any kind of soothing mantra that you design yourself. I'm going to share uh, some of my soothing mantras with you. So you can start there if you want to, but there's one important, the, the crucial, the crucial reason why you are using, um, soothing mantras in the first place. All right. The crucial reason why you're using uh, soothing mantras in the first place is because you must feel safe. The body must feel safe. The mind must feel safe in order for the healing of trauma to keep going. 
as soon as you do not feel safe, which is exactly what happened when you were going through trauma in the first place, right? As soon as you start to, to feel unsafe, that, that locking mechanism, those, those holding patterns are going to come in, all right? And so what the mantras do is that they give you a sense, you start to feel safe, and as you feel safe, you can go deeper. At the end of the day, when you're using these soothing mantras, what's going to happen is that these mantras are going to relax your mind and your body. Relaxing the mind and the body is crucial uh, to going deeper. Okay, so now let me share uh, a few of my own soothing uh, mantras, and then you can start there and develop your own. Okay, so here are some of the ones that I love to use. They're very simple, but very effective. I am safe. This work is safe. I am supported, healing is necessary, all is well. Okay, so here are some of the soothing mantras that I use. And then what you can do is when you, you pick one or two of these soothing mantras to start, whichever one feels better to you. And then the way that you work with these soothing mantras is that you're going to start repeating the soothing mantra even out loud. Remember that pro tip, bonus points here if you do this out loud and use your throat chakra. Start repeating the soothing mantras. Keep repeating. You can even put your hands on your body to kind of relax it. Put your hands on your heart. Put your hands on your, on your skull and your head. And just repeat the mantras like, I am safe. Everything is fine. I'm safe. I need to do this work. You see, you can repeat this over and over. And as you repeat this, the holding patterns of the mind and the body will start to disintegrate and, and the mind and the body will relax a little bit more. And as they relax, that's when you keep going deeper. The fourth and last step is a uh, journal. Okay. So <laughs> this one is super important. Get yourself a journal just for your trauma healing um, uh, exercise. Well, the more that you journal, when you put down on paper the things that are coming, the insights, the emotions that you're processing, the memories that are coming up, the sensations you're feeling in your body, when you write these things down, more than just it being cathartic, because it is cathartic, but more than that, what you're doing on an energy level is you're opening up the energy for more insight to come. The more you write, the more insights and, and, and stuff may come to you to process even further. So journaling is a great exercise to move energy, not just as a tool for catharsis, even though catharsis is a wonderful healing aspect. Okay. So get used to journaling, have a journal with you. And as you're working through the other aspects of this exercise, make sure you always have a journal on hand and write as much as possible. Write, write, write. The more you write about what you're experiencing experiencing, the faster that trauma is going to heal. Now I want to hear from you. Have you experienced trauma in your life? I want to hear all about it in the comments below. Click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel or head over to my website where you can join my retreat. It's closing in a couple of days. And don't forget these videos that I recommended. This is great for you to continue watching after this one. All right, beautiful soul. I love you. I'm out.